All right, hello. This is my live stream studying Spanish. Oh, I hope the uh, Enya in Espanol works in the title. But uh, anyways, if you're watching in Spanish, I see uh, está um, mirando en español. Esto es mi transmisión en vivo. Voy a estudiar español en este video. School. Uh, I'm going to study Spanish in this video, and um, I have in the description below a guide that I use. Uh, it's a website. It's a Spanish language grammar website. I've been just going through the grammar, uh, not even worrying so much about vocabulary or anything else, although I learned that too. And uh, I'm just going to read along and study. And hold on, I'm going to try and pull. I always forget how to pull up comments. This website is such a massive pain. How do I how do I find the comments? Where are they? Live control room? Let's see. Me disgusta este sitio web YouTube. Oh, okay, good. It's here. I don't know why I can't. Oh my goodness. What, what a nightmare. Drake says hi. Go Ruiz. Me pregunta por qué decidiste estudiar español. Uh, por qué? Uh, Drake, I'm well, thanks. How are you? I'm going to be trying to switch through English and Spanish here, and then I'm just going to go through my grammar guide. But Marco asked, why did I decide to speak Spanish? Trabajé en un banco hace oh, muchos años, y um, tenemos muchos clientes hispanos allí que uh, no... Uh, Hablaron español, oh, hablaron inglés, así uh, decidí aprender algo español para ayudar a los clientes. Y uh, entonces aprendí uh, más y más. Y <laughs> Drake asks, can I learn Japanese next? So Drake uh, me pregunta, ¿puedo aprender japonés próximo? No, I'm not going to study Japanese. It's just really difficult. Actually, you know what? That'd be funny. I take that back. Maybe I would. Tal vez uh, uh, haré, o oh, haría, tal vez haría aprender. Um, so, yeah, maybe I will. Somebody asked, where's my mom? My mom's home or working or whatever. I, I can't uh, get a here for any of this. I'm going to try and find the link. For, I don't even know how to find the link for my own live stream. And if I can link to it on Facebook right now. And then I'm just going to get to the study. Let's see, video manager. Oh, no, it's not on your video manager, so go to live streaming. <laughs> this website is so annoying. Link to the mother effing stream. I don't know where the link is. I can't, literally, I can't even pull up the link for this video. Por eso me disgusta este sitio. Yeah, Joaquin, uh, the tattoo is off. El tattoo está, uh, uh, o se quito. Yeah, that was uh, uncomfortable for a while. I had to pull it out of my body hair. It was weird. Uh, what the, oh my goodness. This and then I'll get started. What a pain YouTube is. And they they thought my pecan pie video that I made with my mom is not suitable for advertisers. So I'm going to go ahead and submit that for a review. Um, okay, I'm going to try one last time. Where's the link? Nope. Uh, nope. 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 Control room. No. Wait, links? Here. Okay. Stupid. Uh, how do I say that in Spanish? El un dolido en el culo. Pain in the ass. Okay, so here we go. Finally, I found the link. I'm going to post this real quick on Facebook, on Twitter. That's it. And then we'll get started with the lesson. Now I'm going to start 
right on, I'm already well into the lessons for this uh, website. So I'm already starting on, it's according to this website, sp studyspanish.com slash grammar. I'm on unit six, part 68, or the preterite, part three. So, I'll, hold on, I'll time. I couldn't even make a custom thumbnail. <laughs> oh my goodness. Custom thumbnail for this. <laughs> oh my goodness. Frank called Trump. Yeah, I don't know how I'm going to do that. Okay, now I'm just going to post it on Twitter. Oh, it's already live on Twitter. Screw it. Uh, share one more link there. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to start studying. Unfortunately, I can't read your comments while I'm studying. Uh, yeah, Hakeem, oh, I'm sure you'll learn many more cuss words. Okay, so here we go. Part three, the preterite. AR and ER verbs that change their stem in the present tense do not change in the preterite. They are conjugated just like other preterite verbs. Now, I should say preterite is past tense, like I did something. So, entender in the present, that means entender is to understand. We understand the difference between entender y comprender. ¿Cuál es la diferencia? Porque um, cuando yo estaba joven, pensé que palabra por entender. Not, no recuerdo nadie um, decía, uh, oh, uh, oh, how do I say, it? decían entender. Anyways, uh, yeah, I don't know what the difference between, com, com, if I'd say it in the English pronunciation, com, com, well, I'll say it in Spanish, I can't do it in English. Comprender is like to understand, but entender is like the more usual word that Spanish speakers use to say understand something. Now, I don't know, like I still have never really learned why that is, what the, when you when do you use comprender? I, I just totally just don't use the word anymore because it seems like no Spanish speaker I've ever spoken to uses it. Anyways, entender, I'll just go through the present tense even though I've already studied that, but it's good to always practice. That's the stem changing verb, meaning that entender, I'll type it in chat, E-N-T-E-N-D-R, or in Spanish you pronounce the letters E-N-T-N, no, E-N-T, E-N-D-E-R, you change the E-N, or T-I-N to T-I-O-N, for certain um, conjugations, like entender, I understand is entiendo. It's not entiendo. So entiendo. Yo entiendo. Tu entiendes. El, ella, usted entiende. Entendemos. Entendéis. Now, entendéis, that's for Spain mostly, and not a, pe a lot of people use that conjugation. I'm just learning it anyway. It's just because, but it, it's always throws me off using that conjug conjugation because around here, most people don't use it because most people if they speak Spanish around here, they're from Central and South America, like Honduras, El Salvador, whatever, Mexico. Not actually, not even a lot of Mexicans compared to South Americans around DC, especially like Guatemalans, Hondurans, Dorians. Um, a lot of those uh, countries uh, have people or uh, people represented here. Anyway, so the preterite, el preterito, entender, entendí. Entendiste, entendió, entendimos, entendisteis, entendieron. Now that, I already knew a lot of that, but I, I went back through these lessons because I kind of stopped studying for a while and I want to make sure I understand a lot of that stuff I kind of forgot before I move on and I didn't learn as well as I should have. Okay, another verb, an AR verb, a ere verb, verbo, present tense, cerrar, that means to close, like close a door or close the store. Um, cerrar, tierras, cierra, cerramos, cerráis, cierran. You notice 
The seramos, that means like we close. The amos verb is we do something. That you don't change the stem. So it's not sierramos the wrong way because people might remember that and lock onto that. It, you keep the stem for the nosotros or we do something form of a verb. Uh, I think always, at least in the present tense. Uh, cerramos. Cerais, cierran. Cerrito. Cerrar. Cerré. Yo seré. Tú cerraste. Él, ella, usted. Cerró. Nosotros cerramos. Vosotros cerrasteis. Cerrasteí. Cerrasteis. Cerraron. Now, I always, even when I'm studying by myself, I always pronounce the words out loud because there's not really much point in studying if I don't know how to say the words. And it's really important to practice them slowly and learn the pronunciation of every letter because when you try and speak it in person, you're just going to mess it all, all up and the pronunciation is going to be awful. So you have to have that muscle memory so you're ready to go. Uh, Hakeem, you said something and YouTube says the message is retracted. Let me see if I can... No, I can't. There's no way to pull it up. Say it another way, what you said, because it just got caught by the spam filter. I don't know if you cussed or something. I'm fine. Because it might have caught it just because some letters happen to coincide with the cuss word. I don't know. Say it another way. Drake asks, are you ready for Christmas music? Estás, uh, estás listo por música de Navidad? Uh, I don't know. Music. It's so gross and fake to me. The idea that we're celebrating. We're also, what are you celebrating? As far as I can tell, everyone's just celebrating fakeness celebrating being themselves and celebrating pretending there aren't major problems i can't do it's so gross to me i can't do that okay this is an ir verb it says ir verbs do change their stem in the present tense what ir oh ir verbs that change their stem in the present tense do change in the preterite but in a different way they change the e to i and the o to you in the third person singular and plural so here we go present tense preferi meaning to prefer Preferir, prefiero, prefieres, prefiere, preferimos, preferís. Oh, that's different. I'm not used to that. Preferís, not preferéis. It's just preferís, preferís, prefieren. And el preterito de preferir. Preferí, prefirió, prefirió. It's not an E, it's an I there. Or E in Spanish is E, and I in Spanish is E. Prefirió, I'll start with preferir, preferí, preferiste, prefirió, preferimos, preferisteis, prefirieron, prefirieron, prefirieron. I wonder if my roommate's dog is upset by me speaking Spanish. He's barking right now. Prefirieron, probably not. I think it's just somebody, a neighbor walking by. Prefirieron. Oh, dogs. This dog is not smart. Um, okay, back to the lesson. Dormir, another stem changing verb, O to U E, or O A U E. Dormir, in the present tense. I fucking hate this. I mean, the dog when she's doing well, but man, this dog is dumb. Dormir, duermes, duerme, dormimos, dormis. I'm glad I'm saying this because even the, the vosotros version, meaning this, it's like the spin in the, the version of you all um, informal, like I know you all, like multiple people I'm talking, ad addressing directly, only in Spain really, uh, and only certain, I guess not a lot of people use it in Spain anymore necessarily either, I'm not exactly sure, uh, the vosotros form of Mis. It's different from other verbs, uh, these stem changing IR verbs. So glad I learned that. Uh, or oh, it, stem changing O verbs. Uh, duermo, duermes, duerme. Oh, and dormir is to sleep. Duermo, duermes, duerme. Du, duermo, duermes, duerme. Dormimos, dormis, duerme. I'm pronounce, pronouncing very slowly and carefully because. Hey, Ronnie, Ronnie. Um, I'm pronouncing things slowly because, again, I want to make sure I learn the words right. Uh, the pronunciation correctly, really. Dormir, duermo, duermes, duerme, 
Tomimos, Tomis, Tuermen. And also, I want to make sure I'm not inserting little sounds or messing up syllables that would be easy to pronounce in the English way, especially because these are English. The letter, the alphabet's almost entirely the same in Spanish and English. So it's easy to just start pronouncing things the American way. My hands are getting dry. It's freaking me out. I get freaked out when my hands get dry. I'm going to use some moisturizer. I've been happening more that it's cold lately, I guess. Oh, by the way, what's so dumb, I used up about half this bottle of moisturizer since I moved in the house as soap because I didn't know it was moisturizer. So, so I'm like, man, this, I would wash my hands with it. You, it because my landlord gave it to me when I moved in. So I was like, man, I'm using this. And like after, even after I washed my hands, my hands smell really good. I didn't realize I was just wasting moisturizer because it never lathers. Okay, I'll try this again. Dormir, to sleep. Duermo, duermes, duerme, dormimos, dormis, duermen. Duermen. I got to be careful not to do the duermen. Like, uh, I'm almost adding an extra syllable there. Duermen. Duermen. And I got to pronounce each syllable clearly. Because in Spanish, in each letter is pronounced clearly. It's not like English where you have silent letters. Like a silent E. You got to pronounce every letter in Spanish. It actually makes it a lot easier to understand how you're going to pronounce it. Because in English, if you just try and read it, you're not going to learn the pronunciation right. The pre preterito, el preterito de dormir, past tense of dormir, to sleep. Dormi, dormiste, dormio, changes the O to U. So dormio, dormimos, dormisteis, dormieron. The, the, they, ellos, ellas, ustedes, or they all, male, female, and you all, formal, change the O to you also, dormieron. Okay, For the AR and ER stem changing verbs do not change in the preterite. AR and ER stem changing verbs do not change in the preterite. And a lot of these rules, I just don't remember. I really just remember by practicing and sort of memorizing changes. <laughs> Drake says... <coughs> You should work at Comcast Tech Support for people who speak Spanish. Uh, that sounds like a miserable job, and I would not work for Comcast. But thanks, though. Um, you know, I could maybe, if I'm, my Spanish is good enough, I could get some side game translating. Anyways, why did my mom never, why did I never learn to speak Greek? I don't know. I just never heard it enough. I learned, I hear my mom cussing in Greek. She did that a lot when I was a kid. All right, serar, to close. So, the past tense. Seré? Seraste, cerro, seramos, serastais, cerraron. And I should say, by the way, this is past tense for a verb that is seen as completed or done over a specific specific period of time. If it's incomplete or non-specific period of time, like just I did the, I, I did this for many days or for years or whatever, I used to go to work a lot, you would use the imperfect. It's like I was doing this or I used to do this. Anyways. There's different conjugations for that. Also very easy to memorize, too, because Spanish, everything is very formal. Like, the changes are basically all the same for each types of verbs and each type of conjugation, which is nice over English, where you just, you have to memorize a lot of stuff. Although it has a good thing about English, too, you just add words to the front of it. So instead of changing the verb itself, you just say, I used to do this, and then use the same verb. But still, it's complicated. you got to mem memorize a lot. Okay. How's the stream doing? I'm just making sure. Okay, still broadcasting. Entender to study. Or, no, no, entender. Entendí, entendiste, entendió, entendimos, entendisteis, entendisteis, entendieron. Okay, IR, stem changing verbs. And by the way, I'm going to do a quiz in a little bit. So it's not just all me reading stuff. We're going to do the quiz. Uh, I, is Greek a hard language to learn? I would imagine it is, Marco. I don't know. Drake asks, what bad words did my mom say in Greek? I can't remember. She would yell this thing like, Apupa seka ni agamoto. All the time she would yell that, or constantly, when I was a very young kid. I remember frequently she'd yell it while on the phone and doing laundry and stuff. I don't know. It means some... Insults are weird in other languages. It means something like... The way she told me it was like, you big smelly bear, or something like that. I don't know. People are insulted by weird things. I wouldn't be insulted by that. I'd go, what the hell do I care? You call me a smelly bear. Okay, preferir. El preterito. Preferir. 
preferiste, prefirio. By the way, also important, pronounce the accent on the correct syllable, because sometimes that can totally change the meaning of a verb. Or uh, you just, you're pronouncing it wrong, it sounds weird, you sound like you don't care about the language and it's disrespectful. So you gotta learn how, you gotta practice carefully where the accent falls on words. Some words have accents on certain letters, a lot don't though, and you just have to know the rules, and it's a very simple one. Preferir, the preterite, past tense. Preferir, preferiste, prefirio, preferimos, preferisteis, prefirieron. Prefirieron, 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 prefirieron. It's easy to just sort of skip over some of those letters, and then my pronunciation's gonna be bad. Prefirieron, prefirieron, prefirio. Prefirio, prefirio, prefirio. I almost said it prefirio. That's not good. Prefirio, 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 preferimos, preferisteis, prefirieron. Dormir, 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 to sleep. Dormi, dormiste, dormió, dormimos, dormisteis. Dormieron. Dormi, dormiste, dormió, dormimos, dormisteis, dormieron. Okay, now I'm going to do the quiz. Basic quiz. There's a lot more like oral quizzes. I guess you get to hear them from this website, but you got to have an account. Screw that. I got enough accounts online. That lag? Oh, sorry. Yeah, Marco, I know, but it's, first of all, it's part of this website. Second of all, I'd like a note anyway. It's just, what, what's the downside? It's just an extra um, form of the verbs. I just at least want to know them. Why not? I want to be a completist, you know? I don't want to learn Spanish halfway well. I want to learn it fluently. Okay, good. Uh, Drake said I was lagging. Now, apparently, it's okay. Okay, fill in the missing letters in order to form the correct preterite, uh, preterite conjugation. Dormir. Dor wait, el dormio with an O. Almorzar to make lunch or to have lunch. Ustedes almorz almorzaron with a U instead of an O. Ustedes almorzaron. Mentir. Wait, mentir. I think that's to lie. I'm just not used to seeing it written that way. Let me see. Mentir. Yeah, to lie. But mentir are. What is that? To lie as well? I'm used to always, I, in my head I always think mentirar is to lie, but it says mentir. Okay. Eas. E oh, ella. Ella means her. Ella. Mintio. Mintio. I hope I'm getting this right. El dormio, I'm going to change that to you instead of an O. I think. See, I already forget the lesson. contar, meaning to count, or it's sort of, it can be like account, I guess, or, you know, by someone's account, whatever. Contar. Nosotros contamos. That's an easy one with an L. Pedir, meaning to ask something from someone. It's not to ask a question, like for information, that's preguntar. Pedir is to ask, like a favor, or ask to be given something. Yo pedí. Encontrar. I always mess that one up too. I'm going to look up the translation. Encontrar. And it's not important that I know the definition, the test, because it's just a conjugation, but I want to know the definitions of the words I'm reading. Encontrar means to find or meet. Yeah, that's what I thought. Encounter. You can tell it sounds like that. Uh, let's see. Encontrar. Ella. In what? In control. You know what? I'm going to change the El Dormio. I'm going to change it back to O. We'll see what happens. Same thing, Mentira. I'm going to change it to E. I forget if that's them changing to the I or not. For me. I can't even remember now. We'll see. The quiz helps just to do it. Morir, meaning to die suddenly. 
So it's different from just die of natural causes or old age. Morir. Ellas morieron. That's easy. I remember that. That's a U. Mostrar. Usted mostró. Usted mostró. Okay. Advertir. Advertise. El advertió. El advertió. Syllable, but oh. El adver advertió. El advertió. Notice it does sound different from English. English would be like advertise. You can't say. You have to use the correct pronunciation. El advertió. El advertió. Probar, meaning to try or to test. Probaron. Ellos probaron. Preferir, to prefer. Ellos prefieron. Changes the stem to I. E to I. Recordar, to remember. Recordar, to remember. Tu recordaste. Medir, I don't know what that word is. Size, like to measure. Medir, to measure, sorry. El medio. Rogar, I don't know what rogar is. Yo rogar, el yo rogué. Rogar, yo rogué. Pedir, again to ask. Ustedes pidieron, remember that. Okay. Choose the correct preterite tense pronunciation. One, and it's dormir. So one sleeps, or one dormió. Well, that gives me the answer for above that I messed up. So that, the third person singular, it does change to you. And I kept mess changing and going back and forth on that. And here is to I. Okay. Let's see. Juan y María pidieron. Carmen y yo morimos. Carmen and I died. <laughs> or Carmen and I died. El preterito. Las señoritas prefieron. Las señoritas prefieron. El hombre midió. El hombre midió. So. I know I messed that up. El hombre midió. I forgot it's the stem changing IR verbs. You changed the stem. The third person singular. Okay, submit my answers. Two wrong. Okay, out of 20. Not bad. Okay, I messed up almorzar. I overthought that. Ustedes almorzaron. You all have lunch. Formal. But uh, like formal, like I don't know you, you're strangers, so I'm speaking in a formal usage of the verb. It's like saying you sirs or you ladies or whatever. Almorzaron. I thought it was change, stem changing, but it's not here in this case. And advertir. Oh, that was confusing for me. I forgot because I hadn't seen advertir, advertir before, but I got to know it's stem changing ER verb or IR verb. So advertio. Dio. El advirtió. El advirtió. Submit my answers. Now I'm sure they're right. Hey, Lefto. When's the next YouTube video with my mom? I don't know. I wanted to get her tomorrow for something, but she's busy tomorrow. Okay, so now I got the 20 answers right. I'm going to go to the mini test for the preterite. El preterito, part three. Fill in the missing letters in order to form the correct negation. Dormir. El dormió. Now I know that one better. That El dormió. He slept. Mentir. To lie. Ella mintió. Dio. El dormió. Ella mintió. She lied. Morir. Morir. To die suddenly. Ellas murieron. They, they, ellas is women. Ellos is men. So, or female and male. Um, ellas murieron. They died. Mostrar. To show. Usted mostró. Easy. You, formal. It's like if you're a professor, a cop, 
a judge, someone I, or just someone I don't know. I speak more formally. I use the usted form of the verb, which is just the same as the third person form. It's a little annoying, a little confusing, a little needless. Fine, but I, you know, but it's also it's also good because it gives more choices in language or when you're speaking. Preferir. Ellas prefirieron. They prefer. Those women or those females prefer. I don't like using that word. Those women prefer. Pedir. Ustedes pidieron. Juan. Juan dormir. Juan sleep. Juan dormió. Juan y María pidieron. Juan and María asked for something. Asked for something. Las señoritas preferieron. Las señoritas prefirieron. Las señoritas prefirieron. Las señoritas prefirieron. El hombre medir. The man measures. El hombre midió. Let's submit my answers. I got all ten right. Great. Now I know I'm going to forget some of that stuff, so I'm going to have to go back to it later. <laughs> it's funny. So left though. <laughs> It's funny. YouTube, so I mean, it makes sense. You know, it's such a huge website. It knows cuss words in different languages. Lefto just cussed in Spanish. I'll just go ahead and show it. I'll show what it says. I won't say it, though. Oh, okay. So got somebody named Jesus Loves You says, Saludos y ben, bendiciones desde Monterrey, Mexico. Suerte en, suerte en tu español. The one I left though I showed what she said, I'm just not going to repeat it. I'm not even totally sure what it means, even though I know it's cussing. But, uh, so I don't want to say something, I don't really know what it means. <laughs> it's cuss. Anyway, saludos y bendiciones desde Monterrey, Mexico. Suerte en tu español. So Jesus Loves You says, uh, it's like greetings and blessings from Monterrey, Mexico. Good luck in your Spanish. Gracias, Jesus. Te ama. Uh, where was I? Okay, imperfect, part three. So one way to determine if a verb is actually the imperfect is to try substituting one of the following. Was, were, or like doing, used to, or would. Like meaning, that, like they would do this action. So that's imperfect, meaning like an ongoing action in the, or more like an, an uh, action of unspecified duration or time in the past. So we'll show how to use the substitution test for the imperfect. I've already had some lessons on that, but they keep giving repeated ones and then new ways of using them or writing or speaking them. I worked in the agency during the day. Agency during the day. So there's no specific time period. So that's not the preterite. You, if you say I worked at the agency yesterday, you use the preterite. But if it's just I worked there during the day, uh, that's like lead as far as the information. I mean, it's complete the sentence, but it's not giving a specific duration of time. One year, five years, whatever. So that's the imperfect. I visited my grandma every other day. I used to visit my grandma every other day. All ways of using the imperfect tense. Every afternoon I took a nap. Every afternoon I would take a nap. Imperfect tense. One does not normally think of a general st mental state or physical sensations as having a definite beginning or end, so they are usually expressed in the imperfect. This is something I was confused about too. When do you use the imperfect for something that may seem specific, but was happy or I was, you know, tired or whatever. So this, this helps clear that up a little bit. Ramon tenía miedo de hablar en público. Ramon was afraid to speak in public. Yeah, and it, you wouldn't necessarily have to translate it exactly like that. You could say, you know, Ramon was afraid to, to speak in public. Like, Ramon tenía miedo de hablar en público. En público. Could gen it, just a general, you could, you know, you don't have to translate every single word directly. You can keep the meaning and make it more comfortable to say. So, Ramon was afraid to speak in public. Ramon had a fear of public speaking even though it's not a word-for-word -word translation. Yo creía que Juan podía hacerlo. I thought that Juan could do it. Gustaba el coche. I liked the car. Me gustaba el coche. That's interesting. I didn't think of that one, that that would be the imperfect and not the preterite. I would have assumed just to use the preterite, because in English, I, I'm not sure. 
Yeah. No, in English, you would use the imperfect generally. Or no, no, no. I liked the car. But see, that sounds like the preterite, like it's specific to one time. But as you see here in Spanish, you use the imperfect. Me gustaba el coche. Imperfect is, descri is used to describe how things were or what things were like. Use the imperfect when describing the characteristics of people, things, or conditions. Ah, see, okay, this helps me out more. I didn't know that. Era un, mu era un muchacho muy inteligente. Era un muchacho muy inteligente. He was a very intelligent boy. Era un muchacho muy inteligente. He was a very intelligent boy. Muy inteligente. He was a very intelligent boy. Again, it's important to just practice and practice over and over so you learn how to pronounce things. And also, when you're talking to people, you've got to be able to say right away. You can't do that if you just learn, learn things very quickly. You have to practice so you're used to hearing it over and over again and you pick it up without thinking about it. Somebody, uh, let's see. Uh, the, it, quiero, te quiero means I love you, but or, or I want you, but I don't know the other word you said. I know maybe you're using it affectionately, but I don't know if it's like a cuss word that's kind of bad. I don't. I don't know. Uh, Michigan gal zero zero one says Yasu from a Greek. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Angelo sube videos in YouTube de su mama. Okay. Mean there. Sube? I'm trying to think. It sounds like saber. Or what? Oh, like it says, like the translation is goes up or hops up and, or puts up, I guess. Videos in YouTube de su mama. Um, Jesus love you, loves you says, I have good Spanish. Pronunciation, I wasn't saying yet at that, but thank you. It says, listen to shows or news in Spanish. It helped me get used to English and learn it a lot faster. That's true, and I do try and do that. I um, follow some Spanish language news like Univision, although here in Verizon cut Univision from our cable package, so we no longer have it. So I just follow some of the Univision uh, news online. Uploads. I get it. I, I read the translation on Google Translate. It said to hop on or to go on. See how easy it is to misunderstand translation? That's why it can be so difficult to try and talk about any kind of, with any kind of like personal issue or something between Spanish and English. I mean, in Spanish, if you don't really know it, because it sounds very plausibly like you could just take one definition of a sentence when it really means something different. I thought it meant Angelo puts up videos of his mom. Oh, well, I basically did that. That's what I assumed. But uh, I, then again, I could assume that because I'm a little more familiar with Spanish now. I've been studying it. Marco asked, do I plan on visiting Mexico or another Latin American country? Uh, no, maybe yeah, I'd like to. I mean, that'd be cool. I'd like to film there. And, you know, some of those countries, um, the money goes a long way there. So that'd be cool to to um, get to go there and whatever, uh, just see what it's like there. But I really wish, though, uh, America would stop destroying those countries. One, with the war on drugs, making it illegal. Two, working with the cartels there. Three, overthrowing their governments. Four, sponsoring genocides there and mass purges. Uh, five, um, uh, what the hell else? Uh, yeah, uh, installing dictators in South American countries. It's horrific. That's a big reason why there's so much chaos in some of those countries, and it's horrible because those people there die and suffer and just go through horrible stuff for it. Anyways, era un muchacho muy inteligente. The boy was very intelligent. Era, un sen era una señorita muy coapa. Señorita muy coapa. Era una 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 señorita muy guapa. Era una señorita muy guapa. I really want to make sure I have my pronunciation right and that the muscle memory is there. I can't just say it once and move on. She was a very beautiful young lady. That's what that means. Era una señorita muy guapa. Las ventanas estaban abiertas. Las ventanas estaban abiertas. Estaban abiertas. Las ventanas estaban abiertas. Las ventanas estaban abiertas. By the way, you can donate money to help me keep, support me keep studying Spanish. So, you know, just donate some money. There you go. La casa era blanca. 
The house was white. La casa era blanca. The house was white. Las ventanas estaban abiertas. Las ventanas estaban abiertas. Notice I messed up the abiertas pronunciation before. I said a little too American. It's like a flat A, a lazy A. It's got to be that strong um, Spanish pronunciation. Las ventanas estaban abiertas. The windows were open. Las ventanas estaban abiertas. Estaban abiertas. Okay, now we're going on to the quiz. Let's see. Every day I visit, okay, well, try substituting, you know, whatever for the verb in order to determine whether the tense should be imperfect or preterite. So I have to choose between the two. Every day I visited my aunt. Visitaba. 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 You have to be careful not to pronounce that the American way because American it's visit. But in Spanish it's a similar word, visitar, visitar, but that's how you have to say it, visitar. Not the American way, like visit, visitar. Every day I visited my aunt, or used to visit. That's the imperfect. He wore a white shirt to the party. That's specific, so I'm thinking it's the preterite, llevó. El, el llevó. Una camisa blanca a la fiesta. He wore a white shirt every day, or used to wear. Okay, that's easy. El llevaba. Or when the doorbell rang. See, that one can be a little confusing to me. So it says in parentheses, was preparing. Carmen prepared dinner when the doorbell rang. Was preparing. That's obviously imperfect when they say was preparing. Preparaba. 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 Miles. Juan corrió. Juan ran most mornings. Juan corría. Juan corría. Juan corría. Juan corría. Paper last night. Pablo leyó. What website am I using to learn Spanish? Uh, Marco, it's in the description. Where, uh, yeah, actually, I'll just link to the website right now in chat. Good website. And if you sign up, you can get more oral tests. So I don't know what those are like, but I didn't bother signing up. Um, I'll practice enough on my own and listening to the news and everything. Also, I, I uh, follow a little bit of um, Spanish language news on Facebook and Twitter. That helps, too. Um, one woman I follow on Twitter. Twitter, she uh, she gives out like definitions of words and teaches people on Twitter and interacts with them. Interacts with them, so I read those too. I waited for the so when you're saying I was doing something like something else happened, or whatever. That's the imperfect. I know that I waited in the rain for the taxi. Esperaba, esperaba. She loved the boy. Amaba. Their feet hurt. Dolían. They were very tired. Estaban. Ladies liked her church dress. I knew that. Sabia. These are all imperfect because they're like personal, personal, like emotional states or sensations. They wanted more food. Querían. You all shouldn't change the tire. No podíais. No podíais. You all couldn't change the tire. Excuse me. No podíais able to do something. No podíais. He thought about the day they met. Pensaba. The following sentences all describe how things were or what things were like. Which is, impro which is appropriate, imperfect or preterite? Right. By the way, another challenge of learning another language, it helps when I'm like reading stuff out. I got to uh, pronounce things well in English too. My English pronunciation is even great. I mess up a lot of words and I want to make sure my pronunciation's Good as well, just because I want it to be good. The house was white, era. The sky was cloudy, estaba. The bag was heavy, estaba. The store was full of candy, estaba. As I watch him, he's really good. Okay, good. Got all 20 answers, 20 questions right. Now I'm going to the mini test. Ooh, ooh, excuse me. The party, yavaba. Carmen prepared dinner when the doorbell rang, preparaba. Preparaba. That's another tricky one because it's, it's similar to the English word prepare, but you can't pronounce it like that. Carmen prepared dinner when the doorbell rang. Preparaba. Preparaba. 
Juan ran most mornings. Corría. 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 Man, that's tough for me, that Spanish R. I waited in the rain for the taxi. Esparraba. Esparraba. They were very tired. Estaba. They wanted more food. Querían. 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 He thought about the day they met. Pensaba. The, cloud, the sky was cloudy. The sky was cloudy. Estaba. Estaba. The answers were all wrong. Estaba. I always think it's lazy when Spanish tests. Oh, I got one wrong. Let's see which one I got wrong. He wore a white shirt to the party. Uh, I wasn't thinking there. That's the preterite. Yevo. I don't like it when these tests have questions that are like sentences that someone who's actually doing these, uh, studying these lessons would say. That just seems like laziness. You should think of something more creative so we get more practice saying other words. Let's see. Okay, now preterite part four. And this is another one I've studied before. I know this decently, but I want to study it again so I really get a better um, understanding of it. Uh, in order to preserve the sound of the infinitive, meaning the unconjugated verb, a number of changes, like to do something, a number of cha verbs change, a number of verbs change orthographically spelling in the preterite tense. The following changes occur in the yo form only. Yo is I, or me. AR changed the G to GU. And this is my understanding of pronouncing G in the alphabet of Spanish because it sounds a little bit different, different um, in different, uh, yeah, different countries, different accents. Still, always a little confusing, but my understanding the G in Spanish, if you just say the letter G, is he. So, verbs that end, uh, oh, verbos que se terminan en he, a, er, cambia he, a, he, u. And in G, A, R, change G to G, U. Verbs that end in C, A, R, change the C to K, U, or K, U. No form, the I did something form in the preterite. Verbs that end in Z-A-R, or Z-O-R, cambia a Z, Z, no, no, excuse me, cambia a Z, a C. Verbos que se terminan en Z, Z, verbos que se terminan en Z, A, R, cambia, cambian Z, A, C, Z, A, C. These are, here are three examples. Yo jugué, like jugar is to play. Yo jugué. Bus, buscar is to search. Yo almorcé. Almorzar is to have lunch. Yo almorcé, I had lunch. Yo busqué, I searched. Yo jugué, I played. Some common orthographic changing verbs in the preterite tense in these categories are... Um, uh, these ones always trip me up a little bit. Not so much the yo form, but what's going to come after it. Rafto says, I think Mexican culture is kind of similar to Greek. I guess. I don't know. Um, cigar. Sege. Colgar. Colgue. I'm not going to look up the definition of all these words. I just want to get these. I just want to practice them. Ugar. Yege. Pagar. Pagé. Pagar. Pagé. Plegar. Plegé. Regar. Regar. Regé. Regar. Regé. Regar. Reggae. Regar. Reggae. Rogar. I'm curious what that one means because I've seen it before. Maybe I, did I just study that? Right, right, I forgot. Okay. Uh, sorry, I was just looking at Twitter for a second. Bad habit. Rogar. Reggae. Uh, Rogar. Rogue. Reggae. And I'm always confused again where how to pronounce the G in a lot of these words. Is it softer? Is it kind of not a sound? I don't know. Rogar. Rogue. Rogar. Rogue. Tragar. Oh, that's a tough one. Tra tragar. Tra tragar. <laughs> tragar. 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 Trage, trage, trage. 
I got to relax my tongue for that. That actually helps. It feels like you have to do it even harder. Trage, tragar, vagar, vage. Wonder, like vagrant. That's interesting. When you can tell the verb, it comes from the same word. Like vagar means to vagrant yourself, or really to wander. But it sounds like vagrant, like a wanderer. Um, now, C-A-R verbs, aparsar, or aparkar. I want to see how to pronounce this. I think it's aparkar. Yeah, to park the car. Aparkar, 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 car, aparkar. Oh, boy, it's tough. Aparkar, aparke. Aparkar, aparkar. Man, that sounds fucking bad. <laughs> aparke, aparkar, aparke, aparkar, yo aparke, aparkar, yo aparke, buscar, busque, clarificar, clarifique, clarificar. Now there I'm getting to the softer R, like the American R. It's still tricky for me, and it's so easy to do the American R, but clarificar. Clari clarificar. Clarifique. Clarifique. It really seems unnecessary, the extra tongue rolls, but oh, you got to learn them. Clarificar. Clarifique. Clarificar. Clarifique. Clarificar. Clarificar. Clarifique, clasificar, clasifique, clasificar, clasifique, destacar, let's destacar. Highlight, or to stand out. Almost sounds like that too, if you're just hearing it in English. Destacar, it's like to demark, demarcate. Destacar, destar, destaque, destacar, destaque. Destacar. Traer is hard to say. That's right, Hakim. Traer. I can do that one okay, though. Traer. 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 Whatever. Destacar. I keep wanting to add an extra R in there. Destacar. 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 Destaque. Empacar. Empaque. It's empacar. Pack, pack, like pack your bags. Empacar, 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 empaque, empaque. Justificar, to justify. Justifique, justifique, justificar, justifique, justificar, justifique, justificar. Practicar, practique, practicar. Practicar. I have to be careful too, not just the pronunciation, but the speed at which I'm saying it. You can't make it too weird. Like practicar. Just you gotta do it all the way through. So it sounds good. Practicar. Practique. Practicar. Practique. Practicar. Practicar. Practique. Sacar, meaning to take out or withdraw. Sacar sake. Sacar sake. Sakar, sake. Okay. Tokar, meaning it can mean to touch physically, but also to sort of like deal with someone, like, or, or to sort of send them like a message, like, oh, you, it's like, oh, you sent me a text message the other day, sort of, it can be used like that. I'm still sort of learning that one. Tokar, toke, tokar, toke. All right, the Z A R verbs, Z A R, almorzar, almorse. Almorzar, almorzar, almorse, almorzar, almorse, autorizar, autorice, autorizar, autorice, autorizar, autorice, casar, it's casar. It's like a hunt, to hunt an animal. It's like casar, meaning to marry someone. Like to perform a marriage. Casar say is to get casar. 
Arsh is to hunt, Kasar is to marry someone, like if you're the preach pastor. I don't, I don't like pastors. Not I don't like pastors, that's not true. I don't like what they do. Kazar, Kazar, Kazar to hunt, Kazar, Kase. Oh, that's interesting, that's weird for me. Kase, Kazar, Kazar, Kase, Komenzar, Komense, Komenzar, Komense. Komenzar, I'm guessing to commence or to start, yeah. It's a little bit different from Empezar, which is to start or begin. I'm not sure exactly how they're used differently, but I can sort of feel it. Comenzar, comencé. Comenzar, comencé. Comenzar, comencé. Se. Cazar, casé. Cruzar. What's cruzar mean? Cruzar. <laughs> cruzar, to cross. Oh, like cross the street and cross your fingers. Cruzar, crucé. Cruzar, crucé. Cruzar. Cruce. Cruzar. Cruce. Empezar. Again, that's to begin. Empecé. Empe empecé. Empezar. Empecé. Forzar. Forcé. Forcé. It's forzar and then to force. Forzar. Forcé. Organizar. Organizar. Organi organizar. Organizar. Now my rolling up, rolled R's are getting much better. Organizar. Organi organize, organizar, organize, organizar, organize, organizar, organize. Again, uh, donate some money if uh, you want to support my studies in Spanish and if you appreciate the videos. Simbolizar, simbolice, simbolice, simbolizar, simbolizar, simbolice, simbolice. Symbolizar, symbolize, symbolizar, symbolize, tropezarse, 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 to trip, tropezarse is tripping. Tripping, man, you're tropezando, tropezando, hombre, tropezarse. Me tropecé, me tropecé, me tropecé, tropezarse, me tropecé. Oh my goodness. For verbs that end in A E R, E E R, or O I R, and O E R, the L A L instead forms using the ending yo rather than io. E -O. Yo, rather than io, that's to preserve the sound, basically make it easier to say. The third person plural uses the ending yeron rather than ieron. The remaining forms gain a written accent over the letter i. So creí and the e at the end, which is the letter i, but e in Spanish is how you pronounce that letter. It has an, the e has an accent. It's an accent. Creí, creíste, creyó. Now, the creyo is not an I, that's a Y-O, or y griega o and the O has an accent over it. Creyo, creímos, creísteis, creyeron, and the creyeron is with a Y, not an I, and there's no accent there. It's the accent on the second syllable. Creí, creíste, creyó, creímos, creísteis, creyeron. Other verbs like creer include, uh, these are tricky, caer, Oír, poseer, poseer, proveer, roer. Exceptions to this rule include, see, more pain in the ass stuff. Uh, again, the language is pretty simple to learn already, so I can't complain too much. Traer, atraer. I know I'm going to forget that stuff. That's the thing. So, so this stuff, I don't worry too much about it in the test. I don't like forcing it all in the, in the lesson. I just like to, when I come across it, you know, over and over again, that's when I'll learn it. People are even still here. I know this is getting kind of boring at this point. I'll stop soon, too, because i got other stuff to do. Other verbs like creer include caer, like caí, caíste, cayó, caímos, caísteis, cayeron, 
leer, oír, poseer, proveer, roer. What's roer mean? To know. What's that mean? To, to own or possess. That's what I thought. Proveer. To prove. Proveer. Oh, to provide. It's guessing there. Roer. To know. Exceptions to this rule include traer. And by the way, this shirt is a little uncomfortable. I bought it at Goodwill. I just did it for a funny picture I did. Uh, uh, taking a dump while my feet were on the American flag. And um, I, uh, I bought this so it would pop out the color and look kind of silly. It's, and it still smells a little bit like a good, good I hope it's a Goodwill. It still smells a little like a Goodwill store. Atraer. Atraer. What's atraer? I always forget that. Attract. To attract. Atraer. Distraer. What's distraer? Distract? Yeah, it means distract. Distraer. Oh, now more exceptions. Okay. Verbs that end in U I R or ere change in the same way, but the written accent over the letter I only can occurs in the yo form. Oh my goodness. More <laughs> more exceptions. Damn, I'm late and I speak Spanish. Glad you're learning. Thanks, Justin. Appreciate it. Yeah, Goodwill stores always had that one smell. Man, that's true. I've been to several. They all smell like it. Hey, I'm glad they're around though. Uir. We? And what's uir mean? I forget. H U I R or H U I R to run away. Huir. Huiste, huyo, huimos, huisteis, huyeron. But there's only the accent is over the I in the yo form. Making sure I pronounced that right. H. Google Translate, I have open a lot because not only you can translate stuff right away, but it has a, a button to say what the word is or the letter. So I just put in the letter H to make sure I remembered it right. Ache. Confused because I was just thinking about the word Acha, which is axe in Spanish. I was thinking, did I mix that up? No. All right, back to my stand. We are. We? We? Only that one has the accent over the I. The rest don't accept uyo has the accent over the O. Ui, uiste, uyo, uimos, uisteis, uyeron. Other verbs like uir include construir. Remember trying to pronounce these before. Contribuir. Contribuir. Destruir. Fluir. Influir. Influir. Most, I think, because I practiced this before. Contribuir. Contribuir. Yo contribuyo, contribuisteis, contribuyeron. So obviously I improved on that since last time. It wasn't that hard. And I'm back to creer. Creer, meaning to believe. Same form for caer. Actually, I already did creer, so I'm going to do leer. Leí, leíste, leyó, leímos, leísteis, leyeron. Leí, with the accent, con el acento, con el acento, con el acento. Leí, leyó, leímos, leísteis, leyeron. Oí, oyó, oímos, oísteis, oyeron. Oí, oíste, oísteis. Oí, oíste, oímos, oísteis, oyeron. Preterite, huir, construir, 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 huir, contribuir, contribuir. Oh man, that one's tricky. All right, see you, uh, Justin, or whoever's going. I don't know, whatever. Oh, I thought I thought Hakeem said bye. He just said eight y. I don't know what you're saying, whatever. I don't know what that is. Oh, contribuir. Contribuir. TR messes is that's tricky for me. That's difficult. Contri contribuir. 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 
contribuir, contribuir, contribuí, contribuí, contribuiste, contribuyó, yo, contrib, contrib, contribuyó, contribuimos, contribuisteis, contribuyeron, 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 incluir, incluí, incluyó, incluimos, incluisteis, incluyeron, Incluí, construir, constru, construir, construir, construí, construiste, construyó y construiste, construiste, construyó, construimos, construisteis, construí, 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 construiste, construí, construiste, construyó, construimos, construisteis, construyeron. Was decent. It's pretty good. Okay, basic quiz, and then I'm gonna finish this video for today. Film the missing letters in order to form the correct preterite conjugation. Yo, jugué. Llegué. It's very easy because I've studied these for a long time. Aparcar. Aparcar. Que. Aparcar. Yo aparqué. Buscar, yo busqué. Practicar, yo practiqué. Yo tocar, tocar, yo toqué. Almorzar, almorzar, almorzar. Yo almorcé. Casar, forget, casar. Cross, right? Yeah. Hunt, hunt, excuse me. Cruzar is cross. It's hunt. Yo casé. Comenzar. Commence. Comencé. Cruzar. Yo crucé. Empezar. Yo empecé. Okay, about done here. We finish this quiz. Here. Juan o yo. Juan y María leer. Leyeron. Juan y María leyeron. Juan y María leyeron. Juan y María leyeron. Poseer. Carmen, Carmen y yo poseer. Yo poseer. Carmen, Carmen y yo poseer. Carmen, Carmen y yo poseer. Yo poseer. Carmen y yo yo poseer. Carmen y yo poseer. Carmen y yo poseer. Poseer. Carmen y yo poseer. Carmen y yo poseer. Poseímos. Yeah, I think so. Tú roer. Tú roiste. Es huir. Las señoritas huyeron. El hombre influir. El hombre influyó. Ustedes destruir. Vieron. Destruyeron. Tú y yo influir. Tú y yo influimos. Well, I got them all right. Sweet. Mini test. Again, these I'm going to forget unless I keep practicing. So. So Juan says, or Justin says, you make good efforts at pronunciation and you're on target. In conversational Spanish, at least, pronunciation can really hold up a limited vocabulary. I agree. Spanish a lot better than I do just because I can pronounce things well. You've had a good teacher, it seems. I'm teaching myself. Uh, I do remember learning some Spanish in high school. I actually studied for three years, but I, I didn't really learn it well at all, even though I tried, just because I didn't learn things well in high school, and I forgot almost all of it. Fortunately, the only thing I really remembered is some of the grammar, which was a huge help in starting it again. But I always had an ear for it, I think, partly because I grew up around, there's so many Spanish speakers around here. There's hundreds of thousands of Spanish speakers just in my, uh, the Northern Virginia area. So I grew up around them. You know, you go down the street, there's 
tons of uh, Hispanic people, but also my mom speaking Greek and her accent, it's very, her accent, the pronunciation is very similar to Spanish. She can pronounce Spanish better than me, even though she doesn't speak it. When you tell her a word in Spanish, she can pronounce it. So I always heard that and I could hear when it was wrong and it sounded if it wanted to sound like that. You know, the American pronunciation of Spanish just sounds god awful. So I never wanted to do that. Thanks, Justin. Okay, I'm gonna do the uh, mini test now and then I'll be done for today. And then I'm gonna get ready for work tonight. I'm sure there's a lot of Spanish speakers. Oh yeah, well, no kidding, obviously. I went to the garment district in LA twice and yeah, it's just tons of, it's, it's insane, it's weird. It's like a whole small city you walk in, I don't know how cars can ever go down them and it's all like outdoor, indoor shops, but it's cool. And I was there with a fashion agency. I was shooting videos. Man, I was falling asleep sitting down and standing up there because by the time I got there, I was up for like 30 hours. Coming off the plane, we'd go straight there. They'd buy a bunch of fabrics and clothes for some fashion shoots and fashion shows they were going to do. Anyways, yeah, nice. Way to self-teach. I'm doing that with Italian. Justin saying this. Listening to native speakers speak is autopilot. Is like autopilot practicing. Yeah, Greek accent is so similar. Yeah, it is. And uh, yeah, listening to people just helps a lot too. Even when you don't understand them, it doesn't matter. I have a coworker who um, learned English. Uh, a year or two ago, he barely spoke any English. He has another job. He said his boss refused to speak Spanish with him. So he said, I'm only going to speak English with you. Now his English is great. I said, how'd you learn it so well just by hearing it? He said, man, I don't know. I mean, I swear he's near fluent in English. He speaks English way better than I speak Spanish now. So, uh, but yeah, and I think in general, self-study is the way to go. The only problem is if you're not motivated or if you're unsure how to learn, but the most important things to learn really are just do it slowly, take it very slowly, think about it. You didn't learn your own language all at once, so you're not gonna learn another language. If you spoke in English for this long, it's gonna take you, now uh, you gotta give yourself a lot of time to learn another language. Yeah, Justin says, my grandma learned English from soap operas. Yeah, it's amazing. You don't think you're learning anything when you hear those shows, but really when I was watching Univision, now we don't have it. It was cut out of Verizon, they, they had some dispute, but, um, uh, I would learn, first of all, a lot of words sounded the same in English. So I could sort of tell, you don't always know the definitions the same. They're the, what's called false friends, but, um, this, which are words that sound the same as in English, but mean something different. But I would learn a lot of words because I would also see the text on screen. And so I would sort of intuit, or it was text over a picture of something and I could tell what the word was saying. So I'd learn that way. And you don't feel like you're learning at first, but after like a week of doing it, all of a sudden it's like a, it's like noticing weight loss or something. It's like all of a sudden, whoa, this thing just happened to me. I, I know more Spanish now. It's too bad I don't have it. The Spanish language take stations we have now are like Telemundo. And I turned it on last night. It was so funny. Now they basically have a bunch of crappy, weird infomercials. I, I, I feel bad for them in a way that people making them because they're trying. I know what it's like to just try videos. I'm trying. And so it, it's weird. It's like seeing them, you know, try to make something with only one light and they don't have a lot of room. And last night it was funny because it was like hearing words for the first time and understanding what they meant. It was an infomercial for some kind, uh, for some kind of um, penis enlargement pill or like, you know, like a, some kind of st stupid uh, Viagra pill, but in Spanish. And it would, the whole infomercial was, perform like an adult film star or take the pills that an adult film star does. And so even though I had never heard people talk like that in Spanish, I was picking it up very quickly. I'm gonna finish up this mini quiz here. And the missing letters to form the correct preterite conjugate, conjugation. Fill in the missing letters. Again, it's important to learn, for me, to learn to pronounce English well. So many, because so many people don't even pronounce it well. And what helps to pronounce it well is learn, is read it slowly. Fill in the missing letters in order to form the correct preterite conjugation. Pagar. 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 To pay. Pagar. I paid. Buscar. 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 To search or to look for something. Yo busqué. I looked. Buscar. Yo busqué. Practicar. Practicar. Don't want to say it the American way. Practicar. Yo practiqué. Comenzar. Yo comencé. 
Empezar, yo empecé. Empezar, yo empecé. Yo empezar, empecé. Empezar, empezar. Empezar. I gotta put more air behind that R. Comenzar. I can't whisper it. That's what I was tending to do. Comenzar. Comenzar. Practicar. Buscar. Buscar. Pagar. It's important to just listen to yourself when you try and pronounce words. Um, oh, so Hakeem says, your commercials that you post should be on TV. Oh, thanks. I'm going to keep making them. I'm going to keep trying. Empezar. Empezar. Empecé. Juan y María leer. Juan y María leer. Juan y María leyeron. Juan y María leyeron. Carmen, Carmen y yo poseer. Car Carmen y yo poseer. Carmen y yo poseemos. Yo poseemo. Poseemos. 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 Carmen y yo poseemos. Carmen y yo poseemos. Poseer. 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 Carmen y yo poseemos. Poseemos. Las señoritas huyeron. Huir. I forget what's huir again. Run away? Yeah, run away. Las señoritas huyeron. Huir. 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 El hombre influir. 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 I gotta relax my body too. My shoulders were all tense while I was talking. That doesn't help. Influir. 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 Influyó. Influir. Influyó. Influir. 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 Tú y yo influimos. Tú y yo influimos. Hey, the Spanish Z is equal to an S, not an actual Z sound in Spanish. Yeah, thanks. I always mess that up. So, oh, that's tricky for me, too, to remember. Tú y yo influir. Influimos. So, what did I say before? Empezar. 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 Empecé. Comenzar. Comencé. Comenzar. Comencé. Comenzar. Comencé. Empezar. 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 Got to keep the air going all the way through. I keep feeling like stopping doing it, but that makes it worse. Empezar. Empecé. Okay, submit my answers. I think I got these all right. Oh, I got one wrong. What did I mess up? So simple. I messed it up. Carmen y yo poseímos. I put poseemos, which is the present tense of poseer. 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 Yeah, I'm reading what you're saying, Justin. Yeah, it's uh, kind of annoying. I'm not saying it's anyone's fault. Obviously, English has different pronunciations all over America and then all over the world. It's just something to remember. But I prefer to, in general, if I can pronounce things more the South American way, because there's tons of South Americans around here, like Guatemalans, Salvadorians, Hondurans, um, maybe, I guess, Chileans, Argentinians, too. I was about to say tambien, and I was about to say hondureños y salvadoreños. Okay, poseímos. Carmen y yo poseímos. Remember that. Okay, got that one right. So went through a couple lessons today. I'm going to go ahead and stop here. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks for the tips, for the advice, for the kind words. Uh, I'm going to keep studying Spanish. I try and study every day and try and read and at least listen to some. I really don't listen to it enough. Unfortunately, I barely even watch TV. And I want to watch some more Spanish language movies, too. Anyways, that's it. Thanks for watching. I got to do some stuff, get ready for work tonight, go to my bar where I'm a bouncer, work security with some people uh, with drunks tonight. Drunks. Drunks. People drinking alcohol. Yeah, thanks, Justin. Justin says, super good job. Whoop, whoop. 
and Hakeem says adios, Angelo. I think you might be the only two people here. But this is going to be up later. Maybe this will give someone some confidence to study Spanish. Uh, by the way, if you have lots of Hispanic people in your area, you absolutely should learn it. Or I don't want to tell anyone you absolutely should if you don't need to, but it's such a helpful thing to do because there's so many opportunities uh, with other people. I mean, think about it. You could, you could create a whole business with people who speak Spanish and you could help teach them English and uh, communicate with them and you know, go to Spanish language restaurants. There's some around here where I guess they speak English too, but it's great cheap food. It's super cheap food, but the menu's all in Spanish and the servers, I'm sure some speak English, some don't or whatever. When I've gone there, it seems like they generally speak English, but um, I would always have to try and do a little work in Spanish just in case I wasn't sure of what was on the menu. But uh, it's so helpful, and uh, you never you can make a business. I'll think about anytime there's an opportunity. Think about it. you fulfill that you can make money doing it. So say there's a bunch of Hispanic people in your neighborhood. You know, a lot of them looking for work. They work two jobs or whatever. Think about starting a business and giving them an opportunity and letting them connect more with people, and then you could just make tons of money that way with people who want to work, who need to work, who work very hard. A lot of them are, just, are very nice people. I know I've worked with a lot of them, uh, especially at my bank job where I had so many Hispanic customers who didn't speak English. A lot of, a lot, so I could see their paychecks and everything. A lot of them had two jobs. Um, anyways, uh, so learn Spanish, people. Um, yeah, sharpens the mind too, absolutely. Uh, yeah, los borrachos. Emborrachan. Emborrachan. People really appreciate it when someone speaks their language. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, that's it. I'm going out. Uh, hopefully this gave somebody some confidence to study Spanish. Uh, it's a good idea to study. It's a good language. And hopefully, and it pisses off racists, too, who don't want people speaking a non-English language in America. So screw you guys. I'm learning it partly just to piss you off. Uh, and I'm also helping myself at the same time. Win-win. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, share the videos, comment. Stay tuned for more videos. I'm going to try and put one up every day this month. Bye.